Hello everyone, welcome to this video. In this video, we will be classifying the groups of order P square. Right, so using the previous result which we have studied about the internal direct product if H1, H2 up to Hn, these are the normal subgroups of some group G. So you can express G in this form which is isomorphic to expressing it into the external direct product, right? So this is the result that we have already studied. Now we will be making use of this result and we will be proving another important result which shows that if you have any group of order P square which is P, where P is prime so that means prime square then that group could be isomorphic either to uh, this group Z P square or this would be isomorphic to writing this as the uh, external direct product of these two groups Z P and Z P right. So you already know about these groups this, these are the integer modulo P groups right this is the integer modulo P square group right so we uh, first of all assume that g is some group of order p square where p is prime we will prove that either g is isomorphic to z p square or it is isomorphic to the external direct product so by the lagrangian theorem you know if the order of group is p square prime so its subgroup would have the orders either p square or p or 1 right so if it uh, its subgroup has order p uh, squares and um, because the subgroups are cyclic hence the elements would also have order p square and hence the group g would be isomorphic to z p square right in the second case if the order is not p square that means uh, in every non-identity element we assume that every non-identity element here has order p right we assume the element to be a so we say the order of a is equal to p and it is not equal to identity right now we will be showing that the subgroup which is generated by this group is normal in g once we are done with it we can very easily prove that the subgroup generated by a and the subgroup generated by some other element would be written expressively into this form right uh, and we this is isomorphic to z p direct product with z p correct so here uh, in order to show that uh, this subgroup generated by A is normal in G, we assume uh, we will be proving this by the method of contradiction. So we assume that if possible this is not normal in G. Then there is an element B in G capital G such that B A B inverse is not present in the subgroup right according to the definition of normal subgroup. So uh, whatever is the subgroup generated by A and the subgroup generated by B A B inverse they are distinct subgroups of order P right if they are distinct subgroups they would have nothing in common and moreover their intersection would also create a subgroup right because we know intersection of two subgroups is again a subgroup hence this is also a subgroup and however they are distinct so it would be equal to this identity subgroup right the trivial subgroup identity element so uh, it means that uh, we would have distinct left cosets of this subgroup and the subgroups would be obtained uh, if if you had H as some subgroup of G so you take some element A from G such that A H a square h a cube h these are the different distinct cosets and we'll go up to the order of a so here also in this case because our subgroup here is that that generated by b a b inverse this is our subgroup so our cosets would be that generated by b a b inverse right and a b a b inverse a square b a b inverse and so on up to a raised to power p minus 1 b a b inverse right why because the order of a in this case is p Hence, uh, because uh, and moreover, we selected A from G, we selected B from G, so we also have B inverse from G, right? So this B inverse is also an element of G, so it should definitely lie in, a, in any one of the above cosets. Why? Because for some group G here, right, you have different partitions of this group and these partitions are done by what? Uh, these are performed by different and distinct cosets right they do not have anything in common and uh, when you combine all of them you get back your complete group so because b inverse is some element in g so it would definitely be present in some of the quotient so it would be a coset right so here we say it should lie in any one of these cosets so we assume that it lie in this coset a i uh, into this subgroup right where i is some member for some i 
so you can express because this belongs to this so you can express it as some power of this b a b inverse right this is what we do uh, this is how we represent it whenever we have cosets with us now this power would be reduced to this you, this you can see using the properties of cosets then again you can cancel this and this so you have b e here a raised to power i as such b as such a raised to power j as such right so here from here what you can do you can pre multiply with a raised to power i and post multiply with a raised to power minus j so that it would be a raised to power minus i a raised to power minus j and here you would have just b you can write this term as this and what is this this is some power of a so this is definitely belongs to uh, the subgroup generated by a so this b also belongs to the subgroup generated by a however in the very starting we have assumed b to be the distinct element which was not present in the subgroup generated by a hence this poses a contradiction to our supposition that the subgroup a generated by a is not normal in g so this thing is not possible if this thing is not possible then the subgroup generated by a is has to be normal in g correct so we have proved that any non identity element of order p would uh, the subgroup which is generated from that element is normal in g now we can make use of this result that internal direct product is isomorphic to external direct product whenever we have the subgroups as normal subgroups right uh, of the group g so here we assume the element x to be the non identity element in g of order p and y to be any element of g which is not present in x so definitely this x and this y both would have order p right and uh, and they are distinct to each other they do not have anything in common so by the definition of internal direct product we can write our g as uh, the internal direct product of these two subgroups and you know by the above theorem this would be isomorphic to their uh, it would be isomorphic to the direct product constructed from these two subgroups and what is this this is basically zp in direct product with zpy because uh, this, this is of order p so this is also of order p this is of order p and this is also of order p right this proves our result and as a corollary to this result we say g is a group of order p square then where p is prime then that group g would be abelian in nature now this is a very powerful result that you should remember this result for uh, solving various questions so i hope you understood this theorem its result and this corollary well well that is it for this video thank you for watching